Now in America, Robocop 2 was given an R for restricted rating and here it has an 18 certificate. The major film companies can live with this, although they'd much prefer a 15 for their products, even those with sex and violence, so that when trawling for an audience, they can haul in the tiddlers as well as the rather bigger fish. But what none of them wants in any circumstances is an X certificate, because that, commercially, is the kiss of death. Right now in the USA, there's much controversy over the X certificate, and as Tom Brook reports, serious lobbying is going on for a new classification. It was this film, Henry and June, about the erotic life of novelist Henry Miller, that many credit with finally bringing about the biggest change in the American movie rating system since its creation more than 20 years ago. The film had been given an X rating, infuriating the film's director and Universal Pictures, the big Hollywood studio which produced it. With a top studio adding its might to an already established campaign to change the rating system, the Motion Picture Association responded. Instead of X, it would be called NC-17, no children under 17 admitted. When the X rating was first introduced in America in 1968, it was applied to pictures like the Oscar-winning Midnight Cowboy and Last Tango in Paris without damaging their box office prospects. But soon, problems began to emerge. The X rating hadn't been trademarked, and bit by bit, pornographic filmmakers began to appropriate it. Before too long, just about everyone was associating the X rating with exploitation films and sleaze. The rating had become so stigmatized that big established cinema chains refused to show X films. You can't get uh, uh, an X-rated film in a lot of theaters, you can't advertise in a lot of papers, you can't advertise on television, you can't sell the cable. I think an X rating is injurious to films. The campaign to change the rating system really began to gather steam earlier this year, when a number of critically acclaimed films received an X rating. These films were distributed by smaller independent companies who went on the offensive to bring about change and they really had press agents working day and night on this campaign to convince people that this was not simply an, a ratings issue, but that this, this was a free speech issue. The free speech issue was adopted by some 30 leading directors who followed up with an open letter to the Motion Picture Association demanding a new rating for non-pornographic films with adult themes. But experts say it wasn't until Henry and June was given an X rating, provoking the ire of a powerful studio, that the Motion Picture Association finally began to cave in. The new rating, NC-17, seems to have brought some satisfaction. The stigma of the X is gone, uh, and I think uh, my first reaction is that I think everyone is going to be pleased with, uh, with that. Because many of the recent films given an X rating were widely acclaimed art films, there is also the view that the NC-17 rating could encourage filmmakers to become more adventurous. Hopefully what we'll really see is a new cinema in America. We'll see films that are courageous, interesting and provocative. But there are others who fear that NC-17 will give the wrong signal to the filmmaking community. So we can show the sex act all over the place. So we could show it in every imaginable form. So we can show even more violence. I frankly, as a filmmaker, don't think that any of that is gonna make for better films. But those who campaign for change regard the new rating as an important victory, at least in the short term, for freedom of artistic expression. Well, to an extent, that debate is now spilling over into London, where the National Film Theatre is running a season devoted to censorship and its effect on the viewing habits of cinema goers. This will be illustrated by screenings of notoriously exy films such as The Driller Killer, Visions of Ecstasy and 120 Days of Sodom, and seminars and discussion on topics ranging from whether any single body has the right to dictate what we may or may not see to the current limits set on broadcasters. And in a future programme, Film 90 will chip in its own two penneth with a report on how film censorship works in Britain.